Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Curios Gratitude Gala. It is so good to be here with all of you on this Sunday evening. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Peter Anderson, and I know probably many of you, but if you don't know me, hello from Calgary. Yeah, you can feel free to use the chat if you'd like. Um, I would ask, um, yeah, feel free to use the chat to communicate. Please do keep your video um, off and your audio muted. Uh, because unless you want to be a part of it uh, and sing with us later when we have an audio performance, a uh, musical performance, but yeah, we'd ask that you keep your video and audio off that will help the evening, as well as you can choose um, gallery view or speaker view. I would suggest speaker view, and then whoever's uh, presenting, whoever's sharing will be large on your screen wherever you are. Again, my name is Peter Anderson. I serve as director of Next Generation Ministries with the Canadian Baptists of Western Canada. And it's been my great joy to help um, lead Curios over the last, well, four years now from the very beginning. And it is amazing to see how far God has brought this incredible gap year experience. And tonight's a night of celebration. Tonight is a night of getting to recognize all the good that God has done through Curios over the last few years and to look forward to all the good that God is going to be doing through Curios uh, in the next few years to come. So with that said, I'd love to open this entire evening in prayer and ask our Lord Jesus to be with us. Jesus, you are our Curios, our Lord. And we're grateful. We're grateful that you want to be at work in our lives. And for the opportunity we have this evening to give thanks, to, to show our gratitude for all that's been happening with Curios and to ask you to continue to work and move over these next few years. Thank you for this evening and the celebration we're about to have. Amen. Amen. Well, I think everybody loves to uh, win stuff and we're gonna be giving away a few different things tonight some Curios merch here. Uh, we've got gray, we've got blue, and we're gonna be giving away a few different t-shirts this evening. And how we're gonna do that is I'm gonna pick a name out of this handy envelope here and let you know who has won our first draw for the evening. All right, check my list here. The first winner of our t-shirt is Danielle Morrison. Congratulations, Danielle. Um, Steve and Ingrid have all the t-shirts and they are in Guatemala. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reach out to Danielle and we're gonna um, get your information about where we can send you a t-shirt, what size you want, what color. And uh, when Steve and Ingrid and the team return from Guatemala, we will get that t-shirt out to you. Congratulations, congratulations. Well, without further ado, we wanna start this whole evening out with going to Guatemala. So I'm gonna turn this over to our director, Steve Samala Grant, and I believe our assistant director, Ingrid Reinholdt, who are live from Guatemala. Hello, hello from Guatemala. I'm standing in the central park of San Pedro La Laguna in Guatemala. It's beautifully warm, and we're so glad that you've joined us. We're so excited to share a little bit of this Behind me right here is the Catholic Church, which is still going. We just slipped out of the Baptist Church that started just over two hours ago, and the eight to 10-year-old preacher was going a little long. He was telling the story of Jonah and just got caught up in it. It was having so much fun. We were very sad to leave, but we're very glad to join you. There's lots going on. Uh, we're going to just wander here a little bit. Ingrid's going to give you a little tour, a little walking tour. Here we are. You can't see, but you, that's... This is much more exciting. We're in Central Park of San Pedro, like Steve said, and we're just gonna walk. This is an area that we've spent a lot of time in. It's our meeting place. Um, one of the things we wanna show you is the beautiful people that are around here, as well as the amazing art that is all over the place. There's a tube tooth. And the, oh, there's a tube tooth right there. Um, we're gonna watch that, we don't get hit. And, what also is so amazing is the focus that we see on God and his love here. Um, so I'm just gonna bring you up to a mural. Let's just up this road a little bit. 
These are the sights and sounds of San Pedro. So this is one of the murals that we see everywhere painted, as well as um, is it six? I can't remember. What's that? It's six. Oh, it's a verse from Hebrews chapter 16, verse 31. And, uh, you know, all of you pastors that are watching should have that memorized. But it says, uh, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your family. Hey, chose uh, 1631. Anyways, that's a little bit of what we have here. And we'll turn it back to you guys and join you in a quieter spot. Bye for now. Thank you to Stephen Ingrid. And yeah, we will be going back uh, to Guatemala throughout the evening. We just want to start off the evening with a little bit of a, a quick look there. And we'd love you to meet our, this year's uh, Curios participants. I'm going to show a short video that has um, them introducing themselves. And later on, we're going to get to see them in person uh, as well. But we didn't know how the tech was going to work from Guatemala. If everyone would be connected. So we thought we'd, um, we'd put a little video together to let you introduce, uh, let you meet this year's participants. Hello, my name is Darson. I'm from Eltador Baptist Church in Calgary, Alberta. Hi, my name is Mia Rapley. I'm from Community Baptist Church in Fort Saskatchewan. My name is Eli Goche. I'm from Fort St. John, and my home church is Charlie Lake Baptist Church. Hello, my name is Michael Reinholdt, and I'm from Strathcona Baptist in Edmonton. Hello, my name is Elijah Ma. I'm from McLaurin Baptist Church Gateway in Grand Prairie. Something that was meaningful to me in Curios was our time in Hope Hill when I got to learn more about the kind of things we as Christians can do with to build community with the seniors. We had the opportunity to go to the Banff Pastors Conference where we got to meet some amazing people and this was really important because we got to learn about God while being in community with one another. With Curios, uh, one of the things we do is we pray to start and end our day and we also dig a lot deeper into prayer and at the beginning of this program, I felt very confident in prayer. I felt like I could even teach someone about prayer. Um, however, we've learned so much about it now, just in the first semester. I remember Surreal Ridge. We prayed and it was important because I met God. One thing I've actually loved as part of Curios is the food. We've been having, we've had some excellent food and not only do we get to enjoy it and share it with each other, we also get to make it. I've learned so much about cooking and yeah, certainly some skills I can't wait to take home and share my family. Another thing I really appreciated about Curios was their time in Kananaskis when we went hiking and Tarmigan Cirque and really just appreciating God's beauty there was very meaningful to me. I'm really glad I came to Curios because it provided me with a well-needed opportunity to reorient the way that I approached the world and approached my faith and gave me a good sense of grounding in both. So hopefully that gives you a little glimpse into who this year's participants are and a little bit about what they um, the ways that they've been growing this year already. And you'll hear, like I said, you'll hear more. Our goal is to go live to all of them again a little bit later on. Now we're going to get a chance to meet um, one of our great partners. You actually heard in that video, one of the students, Eli, sharing about Hope Hill. And Hope Hill is a seniors residence in Vancouver, and they have been a wonderful partner with us at Curios. And uh, each year our students get to go visit and I'm, I'm gonna stop talking about it because I don't wanna steal Jamie's thunder, but I'd love to introduce Jamie McDonald and we'll hear a little bit more about the good stuff that's been happening at Hope Hill.
Uh, Peter, thank you so much for letting me be part of tonight. It's, it's a real privilege and I'm excited just to be able to join for a few minutes. Um, for those that don't know us, Hope Hill's a seniors residence community. There are about 400 residents on four city blocks out in Vancouver. We're like a little village inside the big city. And when I first heard about Curios a few years back, I got really excited. And the reason why I got excited was because I'm always interested in hearing about people growing, whether you call it discipleship, whether you call it spiritual formation, whether you call it leadership development. But as I first heard about Curios, I said, this is a way in which people will be intentionally helping young adults shape their lives. Um, but even more than that, I got excited because I thought down the road in five years time, 10 years time, 25 years time, where are the leaders coming from that are going to be leaders in our churches across our land and across our denomination? And as much as I love to be part of the future, I'm really part of the present and the future belongs to the next generation. So I thought curios is a great way to go in that direction. Then the next question came to me was, how can Hope Hill help curios thrive? How can we really partners? And as we thought about it, a couple of things came to mind. One of the ways was financially. Uh, God has blessed us at Hope Hill at, because of careful management and good stewardship. Every year, we always seem to have a little more surplus than we do expenses. And so it was a decision of our board to give $15,000 a year to the Curios program for the first three years of its operation, especially as what we would call bursaries or scholarships to students to make the cost more affordable. So we're thrilled every year to be able to hand out gifts to students saying, here's something to help you accomplish what you want to do this year. But then I went a little deeper and I thought, but we've got something here at Hope Hill and maybe I could ask Peter, if you want to show some photos or clips, that would be a great way, great way for people to see it. As we said, we'd love for the students to come out to Hope Hill for a week every fall and spend their time with us learning about ministry, compassion, care, not just for people, but for seniors in particular. And so for the last couple of years, Every fall, Hope, the, uh, Hope Hill hosts the Curios team for five days. And we've got it kind of set up in a specific track. Uh, it's not just random. 50% uh, of the time is in theory, they're learning, but 50% of the time is involved in practice or practical application. And so the students learn about what it's like to be a senior adult. And then in the afternoons, they spend time with the seniors and they hear their stories. And they learn to realize that the depth of meaning or the intensity that people have and being older doesn't mean they've lost it. In fact, they've just buried it a little deeper and you need to dig it out and let people hear it. And not only do they meet the seniors, but they meet the staff at Hope Hill. We have about 20 people that are part of our staff and they're all doing it not because well, they get paid, but for a deeper reason, because they're realizing shaping the lives of people at any stage in their life is so important. And so I was hoping that the uh, the Curios students would learn what it means to serve, not just have a job, but to pour your life out in service to people. And I think it's been good. Um, I know the seniors love it. Uh, they look forward to it. Now that we've done it a couple of years, they actually talk about it as one of the events of the fall to look forward to. And hopefully they can connect back up again with students later this year as we do a, a check-in uh, through a video context. Um, what are the results? Well, uh, I know it works for us. Our people love it, as I said a moment ago. And I know the, the, uh, the individual students love it because there's a bonding that, go, that goes on. And the nice thing is, is that seniors don't feel threatened by young adults they actually feel kinship with them and young adults don't need to feel pressured by the the seniors it, it's just a a rich connecting kind of thing and so they spend time together over the long term um i hope that students because of their time at hope hill will say i learned something in that week and between 18 and 25 we're making such huge life decisions some of them are intentional some of them are accidental but we just go through a tremendous metamorphosis and what a great way for those changes to be seen. And then, as I said, looking even longer term, I'm hoping that people will say, um, I wanna serve Jesus in any way I can, whether that's vocationally 
whether that's being a teacher, whether it's being a medical person, whether it's being a pastor, whether it's being a techie person, but I want to serve Jesus and my life can be meaningful for Jesus, regardless of where I apply it. So, so we're just really happy as I say at Hope Hill to be part of the Curious journey. And I want to say thanks, Peter, for letting us be part of it. Steve and Ingrid, it's good to see you guys and to the, uh, to the team from Curious this year. Miss seeing you, it's so great to see your faces again. Look forward to connecting with you when we can. Yeah. Thank you, Jamie, and it, it really is such an amazing partnership. And um, to think that people on different, you know, both ends of the spectrum as far as age goes um, can both learn to love one another and learn from one another, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Well, through the magic of um, this modern technology, we are gonna go live to our performers. Here we go. I told you it was magic. <laughs> um, we have two alumni here, Starry and Alyssa, and um, they were kind enough to come out here tonight uh, to sing for us. And they're gonna share a little bit about, about what they're gonna be singing. Hi everyone, this is Starry and- Hi, I'm Alyssa. Um, and we're gonna perform this song um, called Yes, I Will. And this song is really significant to us because the lyrics of the song talk about submitting to our Lord and having God as um, number one in our lives and trusting him in valleys where things are dark and, think, and there's lots of things unknown, um, but still knowing that God is good and still saying, yes, I will, because um, Christ is magnified in our submission and obedience to him. And yeah, um, this was actually one of the songs that we got to sing at different churches when we were traveling and doing ministry together. So that was that's another part of why this is also really significant. Yeah. Yeah.
thank you for to Starry and Alyssa uh, for that beautiful song. And we will um, we'll try to get that uh, recorded another way and get it out to you guys uh, on that because the audio wasn't wasn't great. Well, next um, we have a special guest with us who is in a really unique position, uh, a position that probably no one else might be able to ever say, because we have a guest who is both a father of not just one Curios participant, but two Curios participants. And he also is a husband and spouse to one of our staff. So again, uh, someone who has an incredibly unique perspective on, on Curios. And so I'd love to welcome Niels Reinholdt with us this evening. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, Alyssa and Starry, man, it's great to see you guys. So, so uh, thank you so much. Um, and just Jamie too, I really appreciated what you had to say. I look forward to connecting more at some point. Um, yes, I am all of those things. Welcome to the Von Trapp family. Uh, <laughs> Before I tell you what I want to uh, get into this this evening, though, very quickly, let me just give you a little bit of background. This will be clear in, in a second. Um, after I was done third year university, I went to Bible school, which was a great year of study and community. Um, while I was there, I had the opportunity to participate in some international ministries. I found myself in Hungary at a convention uh, for our denomination, 99 member countries. I became friends with Esther Karsoyi, uh, this wonderful lady who uh, preached in English, went out to a little Hungarian village where this, uh, this peasant woman and was sort of essentially living in a pig pen that was kind of her yard and, and had to put stuff on her bed because that's the only place to store it during the day that pig that was how she was going to make it through the winter that was her winter food supply um, when you have that as a young person i'll tell you it changes your life there's there's just no other no other thing that can substitute for that came back went into a, a a time of mission with young people with evangelism and discipleship traveling coast to coast crisscrossing across canada that was a wonderful opportunity for mission went from there into a little congregation uh for which was a good uh opportunity for service and met this character named steve samala grant and he and i served under this wonderful man dave as a as a uh, senior uh who was senior pastor and in that time I got to see a whole different style of youth ministry. Steve was not the superstar, let's get the cool kids going uh, kind of a, approach. Instead, he'd sit there and say, well, you know, let's do a youth event, you plan it. And people would say, well, I don't know where to start. And he said, oh, it's easy, you just do this. And lo and behold, the next thing you knew, we had a successful youth event because the young people had been in a framework that Steve had provided and gently pushed them forward to make sure that they could succeed. Not so that they couldn't fail. There was times when they could fail, but not so badly that they couldn't get up, not so badly that a youth event didn't succeed. This is how it came together. And I saw some real great character development and youth ministry evolving out of that. And Steve had a real commitment to doing it right. Well, time passes. And Steve is talking to me about this ministry that he's thinking of starting. He sort of has a blank sheet of paper. And, uh, and, he's, and he's saying, well, you know, I, th I think we can have young people and young adults do, do some time of study and some community. I'm going, oh, great. That's just like Bible school. He says, and I think we can get them involved in, in understanding and appreciating some different cultures, both within and outside of Canada. And I'm going, oh, well, that's good. That's like cross-cultural exposure and adventure. He says, and I think we could do some missions and some service. And, I, and I'm going, wait, wait, wait. All these things that were critical to my spiritual formation over a period of years and eras, you're going to pack them all into one year? Are you nuts? This is never going to work. And I'd like to tell you that I was right partially, but only because of COVID. Because with COVID, they weren't able to go to Guatemala. And that was the only thing that was missing. Otherwise, Steve has and now is pulling it all off. And last week, I was talking to my oldest daughter, Michael, and she was, uh, she was lit up. She was saying, Dad, you should, this is awesome. There's no flat place anywhere in this country. You should meet the people here. It's so amazing. And they all speak Spanish. They don't speak English very much. And you should see the way the church works down here. And you should see the fruit. And just, just going and going on and on and on. But she's having that same exposure to, how, to a different culture, but also how Christians live in a different context, how Jesus Christ unites us all throughout that. It's more, it transcends culture. This is the gospel. Well, as a parent, am I in? Oh yeah, 
I'm in. And that's not to talk about Eva. Eva was my second daughter, and she uh, is my second daughter. And uh, she, is, um, she was there last year. And you need to understand a little bit about Eva. When, when she was in high school, she was you know, introverted and, and fairly quiet, quite withdrawn. And COVID made that a lot worse. I, was, I felt like I was seeing my daughter five to 10 minutes a day, maybe. And I, I was getting pretty worried. I, I just got to tell you. And so Eva says, I think I'm going to go to Curios. And I'm going, well, okay. And in my head, I'm going, well, that's great for Eva. I kind of feel sorry for the other students maybe, but, uh, you know, hey, it's going to, hopefully it'll be good for Eva. But I'm worried because I'm going, are you even going to survive 30 minutes a day with people? Wouldn't you know that she basically gets planted and blooms in that situation? And uh, to say that there was a change, to say that there was maturity is really, I think, kind of inaccurate. She was transformed. Every parent knows their kid, knows who they really are, and longs for them to become that person. I got to see it. Eva was transformed. Um, I am a little bit speechless about it. I just don't know how else to describe it. And I, I hesitate to say that every person that attends Curious is going to have that level of magnificent transformation and metamorphosis because it's just not possible but it gives you an idea of how I see Curious moving forward. Um, what I'm seeing is lives changed and character built and as a guy who's done a lot of youth ministry been involved in all these things before Steve's style and the way that he develops young people the way that he speaks into their lives is good. Now Steve is intentional don't get me wrong. He's one of my best friends. He's really good, but he's not that good. The reason this works is not because Steve is that good. It's because God's in it, and God is using Steve's gifts to reach into these young people's lives and be that transformation. And let me tell you, when you see those kind of ministries where God is using people's gifts and it's in season, you, you sign on. Um, just checking my notes here. Um, uh, one of the things that I see with with Steve too is just that uh, there is this this great cohesiveness. He realized early on, uh, and he called me and 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 said, uh, "Don't take this the wrong way, but can I borrow your wife?" And uh, because at the time we were uh, we were short of a female lead, and I, I had sort of seen this coming, the shortness, and I had seen really that Ingrid was being developed into this over at least the course of a decade, and that this was the perfect fit. And so I was uh, just really happy to see how all of that came together and how uh, Steve and Ingrid working together has been able to come off. It's wonderful to be a uh, part of their family and their, them a part of ours. Just excited to hear it. I do want to speak for just one second about a weakness that I see in Curios, and the weakness is people. We need more people. There's this wonderful Jasper campus, when, and great to have that donated, but then you sit down and you go, oh no, now what? Need architects, accountants, lawyers, planners, you name it. It's all, all needed. Do we need teachers? Well, yes, Steve has got a good handle on that. This trip to Guatemala, they are sort of embedding themselves with a the local church. It's not just going, in down, going down and digging a water well, it's becoming part of the culture. Way better, way tougher, way longer. Does it need extra expertise and planning and care and people? Yes, please, please uh, find a way to get involved. That's, that's all I'm saying. And so just to wrap up, um, I see a ministry that's in season. Um, totally signed on. As you can tell, our, us and our family are kind of overcommitted. It's working. I'm in. I'm in 100% with both feet. And come join us. There is nothing like being where God is moving. This is a marvelous opportunity. I hope to get to meet you, eat, each and every one of you. I know several of the names on the call. I'm sorry that the cameras aren't on, but that's the way it goes. Look forward to meeting you at some point in the future. Feel free to ask me any questions. And Peter and Steve and Ingrid all have, obviously Ingrid, have my contact information. Thank you. Peter, back to you. Niels, thank you so much. I was, I was so excited when... Steve's like, we should have Niels come on and speak. And I said, yeah, who else has this perspective as a dad that is now ha having two kids go through Curios and, and um, having a spouse who's on staff. And so I'm, I'm loving that Niels gave that invitation for you to contact him. And please do take him up on that. Reach out to me. I can get you his info um, because I know he'd love to kind of 
speak more into what it's been like to be involved in Curios, seeing family members' lives uh, turned upside down for Jesus. And what an incredible gift. Before we hear from another, um, another incredible person, we are going to draw once again for some more Curios merch for another t-shirt here. So we'll draw another name. The winner of the next Curios t-shirt is, <laughs> this was not planned, is Eva Reinholdt. Congratulations, Eva. Um, you were just being talked about and now you've won uh, a t-shirt. So you can add it to your collection or maybe there's someone in your life that, that would love a t-shirt and um, you can uh, pass it along. But congratulations, Eva. We're gonna hear from um, someone named Ken Bellows. Who some you may know, uh, but Ken was involved with Baptist Leadership Training School, which was a gap year experience, a one year program run by the Canadian Baptist for a long, long time and had a wonderful history. He also was on staff there. And so I thought it would be a neat perspective for you to hear uh, someone who has continued to see the impact of a gap year experience on their life many, many decades later. And we'll hear now from Ken. Back in the last century, I signed up as a student for the Baptist Leadership Training School. I had been studying computer science at the university in Regina. Back in the days when we used punch cards and where a computer uh, filled a whole room uh, with power that uh, wouldn't match nearly what you can get in an Apple Watch these days. Uh, but it was a wonderful uh, year for me. It was a year of foundational learning. I learned about scripture and about theology and about myself and developed skills in speaking and music and uh, community that have stayed with me to this day. Many of those concepts provided the foundations that still stay with me. So I was great, very grateful for that year. Uh, one of the best parts though, was that that's where I met Joyce. And after a, another year and a half or so, we got married and we've been married for 53 years. So that was one of the great uh, bonuses for, for that particular year. And then maybe because I hadn't learned enough that year, God called me back to serve on staff for another 10 years. Uh, most of those I served as the principal of BLTS. And it was a, such a privilege to meet all of the students who came year after year uh, to, to think about themselves, to think about their spiritual growth, uh, to work in community together, learning how to be Christian community. It was quite a privilege. Uh, each, each class felt like it had its own personality, so it was kind of like meeting a different person each year, and it was wonderful. And the relationships with many of those students, I meet them as I travel uh, and as I visit churches. Uh, I meet students who were there while I was uh, on staff. I meet students who were there while others uh, served on staff. And the universal kind of an experience uh, brings positive results, and people speak highly of all of that. Curios. Joyce and I have had the privilege last year and will again this year of spending a day with the Curios students. Uh, and it too is an impressive program, a gap year where Young people are taking some time to think about themselves to develop their spiritual growth. Three things are important to me in a gap year program. The first is personal spiritual formation. Time to think about what the Bible says, to think about how to think about the Bible and life and put all of those things together. A second aspect is learning how to live in community. You know, we, we visit each other in church for a, a couple of hours on a Sunday morning and perhaps a midweek activity. But living with a group of Christians for, uh, for uh, an academic year uh, is quite a different experience and develops some skills and attitudes that are wonderful. And then the, the uh, personal development of learning uh, skills, how to speak, how to uh, prepare a lesson, how to... Um, do musical things, so many other 
uh, personal development things are part of a year that uh, like Kurios. If God is prompting you in your life uh, to be a supporter uh, financially or prayerfully, or to take that gap year and explore what God has in store for you, I encourage you to step forward and join God's work at Kurios. Bless you all. Bye for now. So good to hear about the the impact that a gap year experience is making um, many, many decades later uh, in someone's life. We, as promised, are going to get a chance to go back live to Guatemala. And before we do that, I'm going to show you a couple of minute, minutes of some highlights uh, of the Guatemalan experience. We planned this gala kind of when we did, because it's smack dab in the middle, basically, of the Guatemalan uh, exchange trip and so right now our group has been there for about half of their length and thought this would be a good opportunity to connect with them and so we'll see some highlights now from their first couple of weeks there So there's a little taste of, of some of what they've been experiencing. And now I'd love to welcome this year's uh, participants in live from Guatemala. We'll be adding them. You guys can turn on your video and your audio and we should be able to add you in. I'm going to mute because uh, I currently, this is the wall. This wall uh, is actually the a church on the other side and they play music very loud here. So I'm more, I'm just going to mute myself <laughs> unless okay, I so need to speak. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, welcome. Um, this is, uh, all of you had a chance to hear their introductions just a little bit ago, but there is one person here. Um, Corbin, can you wave your hand? Hello. There's Corbin. So Corbin is actually an alumni of Curios, and Stephen Ingrid had a great idea to invite um, the last two years of Curios students who couldn't go uh, because of the pandemic to international um, travel. And Corbin was able to join this year. So we're so glad to have you, uh, Corbin. Well, we're going to have a little fun together. I hope that's okay. Let people get to know a little bit more about you um, through a game called Curios Crew Who Knew? Do you guys all have your signs ready? Uh, yeah. The way this is going to work is I'm going to ask a question about someone in the group, and then you're going to hold up your answer with uh, the name of someone in the Curios group for this year. So you'll catch on really, really quickly. So here's the first question. Who is most likely to win a dancing competition? <laughs> Backwards. 
for Elijah. Okay, we've got a few Mias. Oh, oh Elijah got a vote. <laughs> Eli got a vote. And Mia. All right. Mia, looks like you took that one. All right. Who in this year's group is most likely to need to be woken up for morning prayer? <laughs> Michael's just owning this one. She's just owning it. All right. I think it's universal. <laughs> All right, well, this, this question's really pertinent for where you are right now. Who speaks the best Spanish? Oh, also Michael. Oh, also Michael. Yeah, I, Michael, you, Mike, Michael, you have to unmute for just a second. And you have to give us, you have to say, hello, my name is Michael in Spanish. Hola, mi nombre es Michael. There you go. Well Mucho done. Gusto. <laughs> Um, next question. Who could best survive alone in the wilderness? <laughs> oh, okay, we got Darson's and, and one Corbin as well. Oh yeah, Corbin. I'm not I'm not saying that Stephen Ingram would ever leave you on the Kananaskis trip, but you know, it's good to know that at least one of you would be would be okay. Now, on the flip side of that, who is least likely to survive alone in the wilderness? Yeah. Me and Elijah. Okay, well, make sure that you have a buddy that's either Corbin or Darson and you'll be okay. <laughs> um, who is the best cook? We heard you guys do a lot of cooking at Curios. Who's the best cook? I need to change my answers. I just don't know who. Oh, oh a mixture. Yeah, a good mixture of people who, uh, I know you guys, I'm sure you like cooking for each other uh, and trying new things. So, this is kind of a leading question, but who is the amazing Curios alumni that joined the team in Guatemala? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Corbin, Eli's not sure. <laughs> Eli's <laughs> there. <laughs> nice. And I heard you guys, um, Stephen Ingrid were telling me that there is an honorary Guatemalan who's joined your group as well. What, what's his name? Diego. Hi. What's up? Hola. Hola. You can speak fully in Spanish and no one would understand. Yeah, you. I'm actually I speak Spanish. My nice. English is bird, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad that you've been hanging out with everybody. I've heard good yeah. things. Yeah, thank you. All right, back to the questions. So who is most likely to tell a joke, but the joke just isn't funny? That's hard. I think we're all really funny. <laughs> okay, we got a couple different people, Elijah, Darson. Okay, Michael thinks herself. All right, now this one's a little bit more serious. Who would you go to if you just needed someone to listen to you? Who would you go to if you just need somebody to listen to you? Nice. I love that. Like, it's a bunch of different people, which is kind of cool, actually. <laughs> you go to, go to each other to... I can't flip through my book you. fast enough, but I also agree with you, Eli. And... <laughs> nice. Yeah. Now, less serious. Who is most likely to eat something really strange and enjoy it? Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was pretty quick. Okay, so Elijah, any any interesting thing you've eaten thus far in Guatemala? 
Uh, well, we had these tamale things and a fish thing that was about the size of my hand. That was a bit strange. Nice. <laughs> and you ate they it? They haven't yet served me tripe, though, so you know. <laughs> nice. Okay, last one. And again, this isn't leading at all. But you know what? It is a serious question. Hold up the names of the people who have had their lives changed by God through Curios. Yes, a leading question, of, of, of course. But yeah, I really, um, I wanted to kind of end with that question because I know we're going to get a chance to hear from a couple of you um, about some stories about how Curios has, has made an impact in your life. And so I believe that, um, I believe that we're going to hear from Darson and Michael, I think. Is that right? So Darson, why don't you take it away? Um, whatever you'd like to share, we'd love to love to hear it. All right. Hola, mi nombre es Darson. Uh, that's about the most I can say in Spanish. <laughs> I can say more, but uh, Curious has been quite the adventure. It has taken us lots of places. However, a reoccurring theme for me of how it's been working in my life is how do I how do I apply all this stuff we're learning about the Bible, about prayer, about living in community, and how how do I apply that to my life and how I live in the kingdom of God? And I think that started. Maybe when we, in, when we were in Vancouver, um, we met a really cool lady named Jody Sparger, uh, who shared some work she was doing with uh, the indigenous peoples in Canada. And that really kind of sparked some ideas in my head. Um, but what the kingdom of God can look like there. And also being here in Guatemala, we have learned, we spent a whole week learning about doing ministry and missionary work in the kingdom of God and in our communities. And that was, extremely awesome. <laughs> and, the whole week we just got thinking a lot about, about that. And then after that, we took what we had learned and we applied it to some communities here in Guatemala. And we planned out some projects and got to work in community. And we um, helped a lady build a house and we celebrated a young man's birthday. And it was wonderful to see God working there. That's all I'm going to share. I could go on for hours, but I hand it over to Michael. Thank you, Darson. Uh, where to start with uh, how Curios has impacted my life? It's been absolutely incredible i started i came to curios this year because i uh, flunked out of my university program for a year um and i felt that i was really in need of some realigning myself with uh god and with uh my christian values and just that i'd felt fallen out of touch with those and God's place in my life, that he had become a place in my life, but no longer the center. And coming here has been amazing. Um, getting to be with other pe people who share my faith and my beliefs and also are helping me grow and are challenging me uh, while also getting mentorship and delving deeply into theology and the Bible, getting to practice uh, being a leader, especially within the uh, uh, the church and with 
many different uh, kinds of people, youth and um, uh, older people as well as and children. It's been absolutely incredible. I'm so grateful for the many opportunities Curios has provided me with to grow. Uncomfortable opportunities when Steve asks you to lead an entire youth event night uh, that you plan, but very uh, just so fantastic to actually um, like like uh, Nils was saying earlier, or my dad, uh, how Steve um, and Ingrid create an environment where they encourage you to uh, push yourself out of your comfort zone, but don't make it so you can fail so spectacularly that it, it truly bombs. It's, uh, yeah, it's been an amazing experience and I'm very excited for the rest of this semester. Thanks, Michael. Um, and now I think we're going to go to Steve and Ingrid. There they are. That's all right. Hello, everybody. Uh, we are now not wandering around on the streets of uh, San Pedro. And I'm just going to say a little bit about our time here uh, real briefly. They've already touched on it. Thank you, Michael and Darson, for touching on those points. And the video you put together, Peter, um, thank you very much for that. Um, so the people we've met here are amazing um, in the sense of our home stays. Uh, we're, in, we're in different places and we have families that are taking care of us, the love that they show us, the welcome that they show us, the strength in their character, the strength in their faith um, have been an amazing example to all of us. Um, we have learned a lot we've given and we've received i think more back and it's been beautiful and there's many stories that will come but i just wanted to put that little bit in there thank you ingrid um and i want to thank all of you who've joined us and contributed tonight thank you jamie for those words uh Alyssa and star it's great to see you we miss you uh i want to especially welcome uh Chelsea and Danielle. Chelsea is in Africa and she has applied to come to Curios next year and we're praying hard we can make that work with her. And Danielle, who won, <clears throat> who won the first Hi, team, guys. has also applied and is going to join us next year. So it's great to have you guys that are getting ready to share this experience with us next year. Um, we're not quite ready to think about next year because we're having too much of a great experience. Um, Nels, thank you for explaining my philosophy of ministry better than I could. I appreciate that very much. Uh, we are just so excited about the young adults that are with us. Um, every year, they become deeply embedded in our hearts, and they will be uh, part of our lives forever. I get to, at the beginning of June, do a wedding for one of the students from our first year. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear somebody. Who's that? Oh, we can't hear you now. Somebody muted you. <laughs> Whoever that was, welcome, and we're glad you're here. Uh, um, the relationships that we build, they just continue. And they're, I'm not they're, glad I'm here. They're such a joy. Um, thank you, the rest of you who have joined us, too. I flipped through to see your names. Uh, your support of this ministry means everything. As Nell said, we need to grow our support base. Uh, not just financially, we'll mention that in a minute, but in prayer. And so I want to ask you to pray for us. The The biggest thing, the biggest way that you can support Curios is by recommending us I'm to Jewish, get so I don't pray. We're a... a Steve, you need to unmute again, sorry. Thank you. Uh, we're a, we're a new ministry and we need your support. We need your prayers. And most of all, we need you to recommend us to other young adults uh, in grade 11, grade 12, even a few years into university. That I'm, okay, I'm, I'm actually Jewish. So that's from taking a chance here to explore their faith and to develop the roots that we know that they can by studying the Bible and by praying and by living in community. So please recommend us. Uh, the best way for young adults to get to know more about us is by going to our website, uh, curios.ca. Peter, uh, maybe you can share a screen and just throw that up there. I just want to show you all 
really quickly um, from the website. The website's easy to find, curios.ca. Uh, our best resource to explain the program is our view book. And the easy link to it is up in the top right-hand corner. Uh, Peter will click on that, <laughs> show you how it works. This resource explains all of our program in um, good detail. We can flip through it. Uh, you'll see the timeline and how we spend the days and our road trips and all that kind of thing uh, is right there. There's our core values. Everything that we do in Curios revolves around those eight core values. Uh, and then, of course, there's some details on course descriptions. So if there's a young adult in your life or in your church, please, please, please send them this resource and pray for them. Um, so that they might have the opportunity to explore if this is where God is calling them. Uh, we're very excited about being in Guatemala. We're very excited about the young adults that are with us. We're very excited about the young adults that are joining us next year in planning. Uh, we need a bunch more. We're still praying for that. Uh, and we're also incredibly excited about one of the newest developments, which is our partnership with the Jasper Park Baptist Church. We announced uh, not very long ago that we had been selected by the Jasper Lutheran Church to be the recipients of their facility. They had just given it to us. Uh, the church in Jasper just took over title uh, about mm, two weeks ago. They've moved in and started some renovations. <clears throat> and Pastor Roy is with us. He's going to tell you a little bit more about where that all sits and, <clears throat> excuse me, and what the plan is. Guys, is this the Communist Utopia startup meeting? <laughs> I'm assuming that I'm on here now. I'm in front of uh, What's good, Roy? what was yeah. uh, Jasper Lutheran Church. Now it's going to be the Jasper Park Baptist Fellowship. My own history here in Jasper has been a little over 10 years. My history with the uh, Baptist Union of Western Canada now, CBWC, is about 25 years. But my first experience was with some BLTS alumni from 50 years ago, Donald Church and Catherine Church, and from the days of the Lacombe Baptist Church, First Baptist Church there with uh, Ralph Orvis and sons, son Dave and uh, Lisa and a couple other people there. So some of those names might uh, ring a bell with some of you uh, who have been around a while. Yes, Steve, we have taken possession of the Lutheran Church, and it's a highly visible and iconic building in the downtown part of Jasper. We have moved some of our uh, stuff in. We're waiting to have a full move until the Curia students get back in April and can help us do some of the legwork. But we have done some renovations, making the stage more usable for our own purposes and for Curios as well. I tried to take a video walking you through the facility, but I just can't uh, find a way to share that screen successfully. So that will come in time to come. You can follow us on jasperparkchurch.com where you'll see some uh, updates from Curios as well as our own. We've received significant donations in terms of time and services, legal architectural assessment survey, and this saves us all kinds of money as we start to put dreams to paper and in realizing the vision that God has given us. We just got word of a substantial donation of $75,000 from an individual who has a long time history with the Jasper Park Baptist Church, and we're just blessed beyond measure. We're going to be using some of that for professional expenses, a property appraisal that needs to happen. And once that's done and approved, we can prepare our property for sale. It's a kind of a bittersweet moment. We're going to need the capital to do what we want to do for a facility with Curios and uh, close that chapter with regard to a building that's been in our possession since 1965 in the days of Bob Ball and the origins of uh, Bedford Inn. But uh, it is a building and God is uh, far bigger than a building, and his church is far more than a building. It's the people involved. We hope to net upwards of a million dollars in that sale, which will be probably about two-thirds of the needed capital. Through the connections we have in the CBWC and beyond, we've been given timely advice. We're so grateful for all of the people who know somebody, and uh, somebody familiar with 
various aspects of the professional uh, services that we are going to need. Uh, someone who is uh, along that line offering to uh, find and apply for a grant money and uh, they've offered their services. Uh, so we can perhaps uh, see a little bit of the uh, capital that we need raised from our own uh, provincial and federal governments. We look forward to working with that individual. And we're so grateful for our CBWC family and are really encouraged by the enthusiasm that's greeted our project. We have uh, met people along the way who were part of Bedford Inn way back in the day, and they're just delighted to see that this companion uh, ministry now in Curios form is uh, going to continue to minister to young adults. Our community, the Jasper town, is really delighted that we have received this building and delighted about the vision that we have expressed and uh, they're just uh, on board with it as well and that's a really exciting thing. Christina Reed has helped with some counsel through the CBWC Foundation. We can and have received donations directly here at the church but they can also be channeled through a fund already established with the foundation and you can contact Christina Reed there uh, her email address, and Peter, perhaps you can uh, make that available more widely, C-R-E-I-D at cbwcfoundation.ca. And uh, that can be done by way of a, a void check or e-transfer or automatic withdrawal. A variety of ways that you can contribute financially to this amazing and exciting venture. We expect to have to raise about $500,000 in additional funds to the capital and grants. And we're going to develop living accommodations for students, for Curios staff, for guest lecturers, as well as obviously kitchen, multi-purpose, dining area, meeting space, lounge and study space. We're looking at perhaps doing this in a couple of phases over a couple of three years. And all of our timeline depends on the reception that we receive from Parks Canada and the applications for development and the permits and all the rest of that stuff that has to happen before we can even begin to break ground. So you can pray for us on that count that we will receive a favorable response from Parks Canada and the local individuals that oversee that here. We're gonna need to engage in a general contractor one who is familiar with, along with an architect, who is familiar with working with the uniqueness of uh, the dynamics in Jasper. And so we would appreciate your prayer in that count as well. Please pray for God's direction in these matters, in a timely approval of these development permits and wisdom in navigating this whole process. That's all that I have prepared. It's actually time for our evening service to start and we have to still get over there. But if you would like to contact me directly, you can contact me at RevRoy12, that's RevRoy12 at gmail.com or look us up on the website. Thanks so much. God bless everyone who's enjoyed uh, joined with us today and that has already participated, supported, encouraged. And uh, we just uh, wish God's blessing on you as well. Thank you, Roy. And we have another special guest right now, um, Arielle McKinnon, who was a part of our first, two years ago now, our first group of Curios participants and is now at Briarcrest. And we're so excited that you could join us, Arielle, and share um, God's gifts that he's given you in, in music. Okay. Hi, guys. Um, all right. I'm going to be singing a traditional spiritual song um, called The Gospel of Grace by Mark Hayes. It's um, Amazing Grace, but there's a little spin on it. So I'm not sure how good the sound is. Can everyone hear me? I'm hoping so. Yes. Peter, can you we, hear me? Yep, good. We, okay, we gotcha. great. All right, I'm going to try to play it off my phone, the accompaniment. So I'm also on kind of a weird angle here. <laughs> anyway.
grace and dying love I'm newborn again Been a long time talking about my trials here below Free grace, free grace, free grace sinner Free grace, free grace, I'm newborn again So glad, so glad I'm newborn again Been a long time talking about my trials here My Savior died for you and me, I'm newborn again. Been a long time talking about my trials here below. I know my Lord has set me free, I'm newborn again. Been a long time talking about my trials here below. Free grace, free grace, free grace, sinner. Free grace, free grace, I'm newborn again. So glad, so glad I'm newborn. Ariel, thank you so much. That was incredible. Thank you for, uh, yeah, once again, thank you for sharing your gifts with us. And we're so excited for what God is doing in your life at Briarcrest. Um, for those of you who are still with us, um, we are, we have about 10 minutes left. And I know it's a little bit longer than maybe what you had been expecting, but I hope that you can stick with us for about another 10 minutes. We've got a few more um, really important uh, people to hear from. The next is from Luann Hogan, who is um, serves with Canadian, uh, Canadian Baptists of Western Canada, and she's going to share a little bit about investing in Curios. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my house. <laughs> I love the timing of this gratitude gala. Um, for me, the beginning of a new year fills me with a renewed sense of optimism and determination. And it's a reminder that I am meant to grow. And on the heels of Christmas, we just celebrated the incarnation that God became flesh and took on human nature in the form of a baby. Yet, I mean, we know that Jesus didn't stay a baby. And we also know that God didn't enter Jesus as a fully grown human being either. Because in Luke 2, we read that Jesus grew both in wisdom and in stature. Curiosity, learning, growing. Jesus had people in his life who taught him about the scriptures, how to work with his hands, people who loved him. And it is with this in mind that I come to you today on behalf of Curios and the Canadian Baptists of Western Canada asking you to join us in building into the next generation of Christian leaders, helping young men and women grow both in wisdom and in stature. And to do that well, we need your prayer and we need your help in spreading the word about the program and we need your financial support. Now being generous is an opportunity to put our resources at the disposal of God's kingdom and whether it is much or little is of no concern to God. As his heart is born in us and it matures in us and as we take on the characteristics of our Savior, we cannot help but be generous people. It is in our spiritual DNA and Curios needs generous supporters like you. Now, did you know that it costs $2,000 to feed a Curios student? I mean, some of you may remember how expensive it was to feed your own young adults, because, I mean, I do. 
Uh, it costs $3,750 to fund one participant for the international missions trip. And it's $1,800 just to put gas in the van for the BC road trip. Now, you get the picture. And if you've ever been deeply impacted by a short-term missions experience, wouldn't it be awesome to pay it forward and make a donation today to fund a similar experience for the next generation? If you feel God calling you to give to this amazing, worthwhile, life-changing program to build into the next generation of Christian leaders, please visit curios.ca slash give to donate today or tonight. Do it tonight. The link is in the chat. I think the chat's down here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Give today. Thanks and good night. Thanks, Luann, and I will put that link in the chat right now, curios.ca slash give, and would love for you to partner with us in, in so many ways, including financially. There's the link there. Um, we're going to give away one more t-shirt tonight, and then we're going to hear a closing word from our director, Steve. So the final winner of a t-shirt this evening is Annabelle Robinson. Congratulations, Annabelle. Again, we'll be in contact with you once Steve and Ingrid return and find out what size you'd like and uh, what color shirt you'd like, and we'll get that out to you right away. Congratulations. I'll turn it over to Steve one last time as we close out this evening. Thank you, Peter. And uh, again, thank you to all of you for joining us. You've heard of some of the great things that God is doing and how you can support us. Our greatest need right now is our general budget. Uh, that won't come as a surprise, I think, when you uh, know what we've been through the, the last several years. We know we're financially sustainable at 18 students or so, and we're working hard to recruit those students. And in the meantime, our, our deficit is because of that, <clears throat> that lack of registration. So. If you can help us bridge that financial gap until we get to our target audience, that's much, much, much appreciated. Uh, we're gonna continue this coming week to send out and uh, notices about how you can support us. And so you'll see those in the, in the social media posts and those kinds of things as well. Uh, thank you to all of you who've been here. Um, I wanna just close our evening by bringing us back to scripture and the heart of everything that we do uh, the story is well known. The teacher comes to Jesus and says, what's the most important thing? And Jesus' answer is clear. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That's where it starts. It's very important. We have to start with God. Otherwise, it's all about us. Uh, and then we know the rest of the verse really well. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. So. As we wrap up this evening, we're incredibly grateful to God for the opportunities he's given us as a community to learn how to love him with everything and to learn how to love others with everything. And our prayer for each of you is that you would be inspired by these young adults who are pursuing the Lord with everything, leaving what's familiar at home, leaving what's familiar in Canada, uh, <clears throat> journeying on the road of life and saying, hey, I want to follow Jesus for the rest of my life. How do I build that foundation? And they've joined us to establish that. And our prayer for you uh, this evening and as you continue is that you would be inspired to continue and to grow in your love for God and in your love for your neighbor. Uh, I'd like to close us just in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this service of worship it's it's a unique one but uh everything that we do and everything that we've celebrated tonight is because of your goodness thank you lord jesus for taking care of us for going ahead of us for giving us your word for allowing us to worship you and to pray to you and to hear your voice and we pray that you would continue to do so particularly with the six young adults that are with us now they're such beautiful beautiful people for all of those who need to join us next year and for all of those who support us, I pray your blessing upon them. I ask it in the name of Jesus. And as they say here in Guatemala, always, amen y amen. <clears throat>
Amen. Thank you once again for being with us this evening. Uh, you'll see a bit of a slideshow uh, going on for the next 10, 15 minutes with some more photos if you'd like to stay on and enjoy those. Again, you can go to the website. If you'd like to get the updates that we send out, you can go to curios.ca and sign up for our email. We'd love to be in contact with you. Thank you for supporting this amazing ministry that God has given us. God bless.